Hey, welcome everyone to Bethany Lutheran's Midweek Q&A. Today we are going to talk about the reformation of the Lutheran Church because the day of this filming on October 31st, 2017, it marks 500 years when the Lutheran Church recognizes a man by the name of Martin Luther, a Roman Catholic, a peasant, a monk, was determined to protest the church of his day based on certain grievances that were taking place in the church. And the primary one was the sale of indulgences. Now, what I'm about to say to you is going to probably sound a little bit crazy if you've never heard of what an, an, an indulgence is, but a man by the name of John Tetzel, sanctioned by the Roman Catholic Church, authorized by the Pope himself, was selling pieces of paper that told people their sins were going to be forgiven if they bought a piece of paper. And, and, and not only the sins of those who bought these indulgences, but also the sins of those who had already died and went before them. You see, the church back then had also made up a doctrine called purgatory, which is an intermittent place where the deceased go before getting into heaven. They get purged of more sins. And so Tetzel was selling these pieces of paper in order to finance the church of that day and some of their magnificent buildings that were being constructed. He was using these indulgences amongst the German people, using fear, exploiting their lack of knowledge in God's word in order to accomplish the Pope's will. Now, I'm not here to bash the Catholic Church because the Catholics even today would acknowledge their grievous errors of the Reformation that spurred on these 95 theses or Protestant statements that Luther nailed uh, to the Castle Church in Wittenberg. But I am here to bash Satan. You see, Satan is a liar and called the father of lies by Jesus. And his tricks are nothing new. His goal is to get the people of this world to fall away from what the Word of God says, to relegate the Bible to ancient folklore, to get people to stop coming to church and gathering around where word and sacrament are dispensed. And when he accomplishes that, people begin to adopt the mindset of the world, which is deadly and can be eternally fatal. Just think about what's going on in our public sector today in the school system. From grade school level to university level, I'm not even talking about our academic rank in the world. I'm talking about the moral decline in our nation. With young impressionable children and young adults going off to school, you see, we oftentimes hear this great clamor in our society that church and state are to be entirely separate. And yet, in many regards, it is our school system today that has adopted matters of the church into their teachings. So think about this. We send our kids off to school and our kids, younger and younger, stop coming to church, set their Bibles aside as they experience more and more freedom in life. And what is it that the school system begins to teach them in matters of the church? Well, number one, our schools are teaching the foundation of the earth and it does not coincide with God's word. God teaches us all about creation and a young earth and how he created it in six days, but that's not what they're taught in the schools. And they're not taught as a theory. In many respects, it's taught as facts based on evidence that apparently they have. They also, in the schools today, by and large across this nation, teach a moral relativism, which is simply this. Absolute truths no longer exist. What's true for you may not be true for me, so don't bother me with anything that you would might consider an absolute. They teach a pluralistic or pluralism, which is also a religious view that all religious faiths, no matter what they are, lead to the same place. Again, these are matters of the church and the Bible, and God does not teach those things. 
They also teach about human sexuality, about when a person is able to have sex and not, and who they want to have it with, whether it's in marriage or outside of marriage. These are matters that belong to the church because God speaks about the origin of man, the origin of the earth. Jesus tells us that he's the only way to heaven, and it's not true that all roads lead eventually to heaven. And so this is what happens when people set aside their Bibles. They pay attention more to sports on Sunday morning than they do church. The devil comes in and he begins to slowly adopt a cultural, worldly view of life, which can be eternally fatal and deadly. Doesn't it sound crazy that 500 years ago, the common folk were buying a piece of paper for the forgiveness of sins? Absolutely. But that's exactly the kind of craziness that happens in society when people set aside the Word of God. When people begin to believe what they are taught, that they are just a higher form of an animal, we should not expect them to behave anything different than an animal if that's what they are taught. If we are teaching people that sex is okay at any time in their life, why should it surprise us that we see so much promiscuity in our society today? So many live in arrangements outside of marriage. So many relationship problems. You see, Luther 500 years ago is very relevant in our society today because one of the backbones of the Lutheran Reformation was Luther held up Scripture alone. Scripture alone is going to determine what we believe about God, about ourselves, about human relationships, about the origin of earth, about the origin of man, about human sexuality. God's Word is the only place where we can trust what is taught us. And so we are reminded on this great day of Reformation, the words of Jesus in John's Gospel, in John chapter 8, verse 31. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, the word that Jesus uses for holding to the truth has the idea of remaining in the truth. So what Jesus is saying here is his desire for you and me is to remain in God's word, to believe what it says, to trust what it says, because that is where true freedom lies. You won't become entangled by worldly views if you remain in what Jesus says to you. And dear friends, think of why God sent his son to this world in the first place. Was it not to set all of us free? Free ultimately from ourselves? From the bondage of sin and the enslavement of the devil? Absolutely. And that's what Jesus did when he came into this world. You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to be the great sin bearer. He came as God's representative of our sin, taking it all upon himself, going up to Jerusalem, and then suffering and dying for that sin. To not only set you free by forgiving you of your sins in this earthly life, but ultimately setting you free for all eternity. Now, it's important as God's children that we don't jump back in to worldly view and become entangled by their thoughts. And that is why it is so important to this day, 500 years later, that we still celebrate the great reformation of not just the Lutheran church, but of the Christian church. That a man is saved by faith alone, by grace alone, through the Holy Scriptures alone, to the glory of Jesus Christ alone. Let us thank God this week, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and pray that God would continue to raise up faithful men and women in the church to boldly and courageously testify to these great Reformation truths. God's blessings on your day and on your week.